Well, lucky you. We meet again. Charlie Green Podcast. Like, share, subscribe, comment. If you want to support the channel, uh, info's in the description. And you got to bear with me. I've got this stomach flu, man. It's, it's brutal. Uh, it's brutal. So I've missed a few days this week. But yeah, today, the creative dark ages. We are living in the creative dark ages. Uh, we are pickled, submerged in the creative dark ages. And it's been going on for a while. And quite honestly, if you uh, read Hindu, you, it's a cycle, Maya, whatever they call it. Uh, and it ties in with any time you take out the arts, uh, the society goes to shit. And most dumbasses, people with like average IQs, and they're all over, uh, think artists are lazy and stupid. I mean, that's the, you know, that's the uh, most people. I mean, if you know about the, the IQ bell curve, it's scary. To think that, okay, you got this bell curve and then the high IQs and everybody underneath. So basically think of the dumbest person you've ever met. Most people in the world are a lot dumber than that. And these people's are mayors and sheriffs and I'm this and I'm that and I'm whatever. Just this, you know, smart enough to, uh, you know, put on their clothes and manipulate people. And, uh <laughs> Bond with other dumbasses. So it's not, we're all great. Hey, see. Yeah, the creative dark ages. Again, it's been going on and it's different. Like say the art world and music and this and acting and everything. It's been, you know, in some are more, you know, you got to think of uh, poor Vincent Van Gogh. I mean, I think he only, he only painted for three years, like 30 time he was 30 to 33 and of course he was insane i mean clinically and legally insane uh but he was a damn good artist um and and people knew who even when he was alive his brother Theo or Theo or whatever was an art gallery uh owner or manager or whatever you know and, and poor uh vincent <laughs> i think he sold like one painting in his life and now he's the goat. He's the, you know. Um, can you imagine people back then, like the late 1800s, like this? No, that look, that's shit. Huh? Vincent Van Gogh. No, oh, he's crazy. He. But people uh, want things like they want to be something yet they're never gonna admit that they see there's people that should be you know there's morning people there's night people there's artists there's sheriffs there's painters there's construction you know but then people think everybody's the same no certain people and again it's not a good thing it's just it's the problem people faking it and forcing like oh yeah i mean i'm talented no, you're not um and if they have money behind them or that i mean it's all a con you know, if they've got usually a family member, a parent that's got money, then they can just, hey. Um, but yeah, the art, art, the art, every acting, the arts. Uh, we are in the creative dark ages. We are in the bell jar, my friend. So what do you do? How do you get the fuck out of it, you know? And let me explain a few things. So, like, say I, uh, you know, I started you know, when I was painting. I studied art, you know, and I, but painting. I started doing art shows around two thousand three in L.A. By, uh, you know, a few years after that, I was you know getting into gallery, you know, bigger galleries downtown. Gal, and, and and I thought the music industry was bad. The art world is even worse. I mean. Hysteria is cool. I mean, people have no inner monologue. They, it's just nepotism, favoritism, crony. I, you know, it's like brother, where art thou? I mean, it's just dumb. And these people are successful and powerful. That <laughs> so I had a, uh, I'd work my way 
to this one big gallery in downtown LA. And I'm not going to say who it is, but they, him and his wife, they ran the gallery. And to this day, man, I, I'm grateful for them. They were so cool to me. They helped me out a lot. They are not, they're not part of what I'm talking about. They knew, they know exactly what I'm talking about, but they're not, they are true artists because he was an artist. And so was, she, so was she. And she, they could see art. It didn't matter. Of course, you got to do certain things to keep your gallery running, but, um, yeah, they were patrons of the arts. I mean, they weren't giving me money or anything, but I mean, they, uh, it, it was hard to get just to hang in a group show. So for instance, there's all these like little secrets too, that people don't want you to know. I mean, everybody knows about pay to play, right? Bands play to, uh, I never did. I wouldn't do it. Um, so like in LA, you pay like X amount of dollars. They give you like so many tickets and then you got to go sell those tickets to make your money back or make any money. And, uh, some bands have like stripper girlfriends or, or rich parents and they, they just throw those tickets away. They don't care. They'll pay the money. You know? And it, it's even more to open for a band. Matter of fact, supporting band, bands that are even bigger, that are opening act support, they're, 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 their label pays to get on that um, a, a tour. It's to, tour support. Yeah, you're paying some. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, a th it's been going, dude, it's, it isn't like this is new. Uh, so I, uh, you know, I got, I get in this gallery, I'm doing group shows and then you start selling and people like you, Hey, you know, and even in a group show, there would usually be like a featured artist. This place was so big. There wasn't an artist that could paint that to fill it. So you have like a, in front, you'd have the group show. And then in the back, there was a, a featured artist. Um, and so, uh. I just, you know, I, most of the time their art was shit. It would, you know, it's like, what? Like, okay. So something's going on here. And I got to know the guy and I kind of knew it was like a pay to play thing. And then, um, you know, they finally said, look, don't, I mean, this is like, they're, they, they look, if you tell anybody, but they, they, they don't say anything, but we, it's, uh, 600 this is the minimum 600 a night to be that group i mean that uh featured artist so if it's a friday show friday night saturday night you gotta pay 600 each night up front and it's like well i'll sell a painting and paint no before the show is even on before before they've curated they're you, you gotta pay and i get it man a gallery we need art galleries man we need you know so I kind of not, I mean, it's just how people react to it. So he was telling me this and I was like, uh-huh. And he goes, Hey, the reason I'm telling you this, keep your mouth shut is I'm going to let you, you don't have to pay. Um, you're, I know your art already sells, you know, um, uh, when, <laughs> when you're there, it's kind of a party, you know, you bring a lot of people. So yeah, we're gonna give you, um, you're gonna be the featured artist, but don't say a word. And if these people come up to you, lie and say you pay. And I was like, cool, thank you so much. Yeah, I will. I mean, what's a little lie? Right off the bat, like I don't, I don't even know how these people knew whatever, like the next day or what people are complaining. And, they go, and some of these people I thought were cool. I mean, their art was shitty, but they're pissed. And they went into the gallery, like complaining to the owners. And he kind of broke it down like, hey, man, you know, like you, your art doesn't sell even when you pay. You know, Charlie's does. He brings in, you know. And he has a lot of art. He, 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 people hanging the same pieces of shit are over it. No. And they kind of uh, went at me. Like they, oh, and then everything else comes out. He's this, he's that. Because you know, they can't really say anything about my art. So they have to uh, attack you personally. 
like anything. This is just, you name it, they'll, and I could, I didn't care. Like, okay, yeah, I mean, I've dealt with this with my band, so. Um, and when I self-published my book, I kind of did a similar thing. I co-op with a, pardon me, with a company. I paid for certain things, and then they paid for the promotion, this, that, and the other, which I thought was a great deal until they didn't pay me. But, or eventually they didn't pay me. But uh, in the end, I mean, you know. But yeah, uh, the and I'm sure all of you can um, relate to certain things. That it's it, we're it, look around. Everything is just there's no record labels. There's no the art galleries are closing. There's just no people don't even they claim to be art now. The art like graphic design, you know, NFTs, and you see these the, the easiest con is the art world. Like not too long ago, the dude that like hung a banana on the wall, like taped a banana on the wall and said, you know, a million dollars and some dumbass paid a million dollars and just ripped the, and ate the banana. <laughs> and then they're like, well, it's performance art. So that only goes so far. But I mean, I guess if you've already made that much money, who gives a shit? I mean, I actually take my hat off to, hey, I mean, I wouldn't do it. Uh, you're only going to be remembered from <laughs> just being a con man. And they're going to look back at this era and I'm, I'm including like before I was even born, like this was happening. This has been happening there as a creative dark ages. They're going to look back and be like, how did people, why, what the hell was going on? It's just, and these people that aren't artists, whether they're a musician, actor, well, say, let's say acting. Like when I was, you know, when you get like uh, the breakdowns and you, you know, to suit yourself for an audition, like you want to, uh, a lot of times in the description, they'll be like, hey, you got to be 5'9", you got to wear a size 9, and it just over and over. And I finally, somehow I talked to a wardrobe person. There's like, yeah, well, the average person is 5'9", size 9, and most wardrobe houses are full of those clothes so these people are just basically lazy and just if you fit the suit you got the rope you know um uh there's a there's a story about uh, michael kane who is an actor one of my favorite actors and he's got an acting instruction instructional video you can watch on youtube that's amazing i i when I took acting classes in college, we, we'd study it and watch it. And, but he, there's a story. I don't know if he tells it on that, but there's a story where he uh, wanted to be an actor, but he was, you know, new and fresh, didn't know. But uh, he went for an audition and um, he didn't do that well. And they kind of scolded him like, look, man, you know, how did you get here? You know, you need to take some time, take some acting classes. Like, you know, you're wasting our time. And he's like, you know, heartbroken or whatever. And, goes home and then like a couple of days later that he gets a call and he's like, Hey, do you have a passport? Yeah. You got the role. Cause the other guys didn't. So yeah, I mean, lucky him, that kind of stuff happens, which now it's just like, it, it, it's just everywhere. And these people that claim to be something, which they're not, I mean, yeah, they're, you know, I can play guitar, but you're just, you're just, Based maybe average. Um, again, some of these uh, biggest ego maniacs that I've ever met were people in cover bands. Like I've been around dudes that were like, you know, cool. They were like, you know, had made it and they just nice and humble and and somebody, you know, <laughs> playing, you know, Mustang Sally is like the biggest douchebag you've ever met. And there was, a, okay, so these people that claim to be, you know, so this, okay, sick on cover bands. So I ha, I know a lot of people that are in cover bands. I have friends in cover bands. Not everybody is like, you know, uh, but most of them are. Um, this is a long time ago. This is like in the late 90s. Matter of fact, I just moved to LA. And, um, 
<laughs> I had joined a band uh, or started a band with Sean from the Asexuals. He had moved to LA like the same week. That's a long story. I'll get into that too. But so we started a band, Lamada, and we were, uh, um, we kind of bam, like started playing and doing well. And, and he knew a lot of people. And one of his friends and a producer, uh, who had produced one of the asexual albums was Steve Kravak and Steve helped me out a lot. And Steve owned a label porterhouse with Greg Hetson of bad religion. He was also in the circle jerks and I'm a big fan of Greg and he's this little dude, you know, he's, he's cool. He's, he's a cool dude. So I just happened to run into some people I knew from back in the Midwest, in LA. Like you say, hey, it's a small world, believe me. What are y'all doing here? Hey, we're vacationing here. Cool. What do you got, you know? And so I made the mistake of <laughs> inviting them. So we're having, so we, at the time, Steve and Greg owned Porterhouse Records. They were considering signing LaMotta. And so we were, uh, meeting at the rainbow at the bow so just kind of like you know hang out you know party you know just there's a lot of that you don't want to you know when you're about to sign you know they so we're like i invited them they're like oh yeah we want to go to the rainbow anyway you going so yeah we're gonna be there at like 10 o'clock um so we you know we get there we're already there and they show up And there's like six or seven of them. So when they when they come up, I'm introducing them to everybody in the first name. I'm not explaining like, oh, this is Steve Kravak, and he and then this is Greg, and he used to be no, no. It's just like, hey, this is Steve, this is Greg, you know. So, and they didn't know who they were. No. Um, and they are literally like being the douchiest. Yeah, we got this cover band, you know, we're making like 400 a gig. And it's like, what the fuck, man? Shut the fuck up. You even know who you're talking to? You know, these guys own bars and like record labels and have done shit. You know what I mean? Just being just, yes, kind of, you know. And, and they're looking at me and we're just like, I was like, don't let this, let it, let's go with this. Like, don't, because they were about to go, hey, you know who I am? I was like, no, no, just. And Sean and I, Sean, who was in the asexuals, he literally just got like, dude, can you believe these people? I mean, it's like, for one, it's the rainbow. Huh? There's so much. Come on. Have a good time. Let your guard down. Oh, no, there's kind of, and they were like, yeah, well, you know, one of these days, maybe you can. And they were like, oh, yeah, I guess maybe if I'm, if I'm lucky enough, maybe I will. All the while knowing that they're, they've accomplished more than all of them and everybody they know combined. All right. <laughs> These people aren't even on, you know, they don't exist, basically. Besides that bubble they're in. And bubbles pop, believe me. they Sometimes they last a bit, but they, they a bubble's going to pop. Um, and then they... Dude, like, the, you just don't like, so we, <laughs> we're on the patio and you can't like, so they ordered soup, like one bowl of soup. I wasn't, I was standing, I mean, I didn't, you know, and then the, the soup came, they're like, oh, can we have like seven spoons? And the waitress was like, hey, you cannot do that. We, we, uh, what? we kind of scolded them. And who in their right mind or in all these cool people at the rainbow would want to be eaten out of a, the same bowl of soup? Like that's self sabotage. Like I want to be looked at as an idiot. I want to look at me all the while acting like they're fucking, you know, Bruce Springsteen. Bruce Springsteen wouldn't even act that arrogant, you know. And I was like, should I say something? No. And that offended them. They're like, well, I mean, yeah, and then they left. Go out the street, wait for the taxi or whatever. And they were out there forever. Wait, so we're here on the patio, and they're out there, you know. <laughs> People going by, you know, and just kind of looking back. At, and we were like, just, just go inside. I want to see these. And quite honestly, 
have I seen any of these people again? I don't even know. But the point I'm trying to make is that's the problem. These arrogant, false, con men, people. I'm this, I'm that. Yeah, you know, like a pentatonic scale and you can learn, you know, smoke on the water or whatever you're playing. But you're not. And again, most people, whether they want to admit it or not, are so insecure that they could never even... Most people, I mean, this is not, they, just to stand up in public in front of 20 people to talk, they, they're frightened to death. Matter of fact, I read somewhere like the, two, the biggest fears in people's lives are uh, death and speaking in public, which I don't get. I mean, I can, I just, I don't know. I, maybe I had more self confidence, but I didn't bother me. Matter of fact, it, it, what bothered me was performing live and peacocking. When I was younger, you know, by the time I, you know, 19, 20, 21, it's like, do you really want to do this? You know, it, it just seems so, woo, like I could never do that. Like I never wore, tease my hair, none of that. I just, you know, I was always on stage like in a t-shirt and jeans. And honestly, I wish I could peacock around and, you know, smooth up in ya or whatever. You know, I just can't do it. And so, yeah, they let the bow and then we were talking. They were like, why would they sabotage themselves like that? Like, why wouldn't they want to? Um, and to this day, I bet they don't realize who they were talking to. Pardon. I've got this stomach flu. Bear with me. Folios. Just arrogant, don't know, never know, don't know, can't write a song. But yeah, everybody has, the, look around. It's it's everywhere. I mean, the you know, they, uh, it's in politics, it's in everything. It's, it's these people that, again, being cool, calm, and collective is not cool anymore. It's more overbearing and domineering and hysterical and just, and they see, right? No, and, and attacking people. And again, you could tell, I'm an actor, I'm a musician, I'm an artist, these same people. And they kind of have like the same kind of facial expressions and they sound the same. They have this walk. I mean, it's, it's, it's silly. It's, it's scary, actually. But once you have this knowledge, you can you can point these guys out. And I remember when I, uh, I think it was Relativity Records. We, my band Love Engineer, we went to Chicago, and we were talking with Relativity Records, and one of the people there had broke it down like, yeah, well, you know, this is what you do. You, anytime there's a scene happening, then here comes the copycat bands. So you want to ignore that first wave, okay? And then you want to wait till the second wave. Okay, that's where all the true artists probably are. You know, like say when Nirvana came out and then what? A month later, everybody's cutting their hair and wearing like cardigan sweater, you know, like that's, but people play into that. And again, with that, you can't put, you know, I'm a country boy from Tennessee. You can't put all your eggs in one basket. Like, that's it. You can't, you know, that's what I hated about the grunge movement, the 90s music. Like, they hated everything except this, their alternative. Come on, man. I mean, I love Journey. You know, it's, it's, I, 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 you know I'm sophisticated enough to like certain things that, you know, I don't have, I just don't like, I don't paint in one color. I don't eat this one food. And that's another thing. They're weird about their food. Again, that, that, that involves soup. Let's all eat out of this bowl of soup at the rainbow. I mean, if you think about it, what is the dumbest, douchiest, sabotaging thing you could do? There was cool people that, I mean, I think Lemmy was there. I mean, all these people, no. They, they, let's stand out, yeah. Yeah, you stood out. You made an ass of yourself and don't even know it. 
just like it's just no self awareness. Just yeah, la, 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 la. and that's what they're going through their life now in this little bubble. They're hey, they can succeed in that five mile radius or whatever the fuck it is. And birds of a feather stick together. So, yeah, they get bookings because the people book are dumb. And, the, and I hate to say this, but people are insecure. So they see somebody on stage singing, like, oh, they're great. Like, a lot of people don't even know what good is. He's just up there. I mean, he's... No. Uh-uh. Or they, they're, they're friends. So he's my friend. It's got to be... No, 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 no. Like, when I was young, I was in my teens, you know, when I... I stopped my or quit my f- first band and started Love Engineer. I had to do like a personal inventory. Did you think like, yeah, this is great, you know, just because I'm doing it, we're doing this, and I really had to like pull back and go, okay, would I like this music? I like it because I'm doing it, and I wanted to do well, you know. Pull back. Would you be a fan of this if this did? And you heard no. Absolutely not. This is shit. I mean, it ain't bad, you know, but no, I want to do better. So I, I, it it was, you know, your face gets flush. You don't want to, but to improve as a songwriter, I had to do that. I had to be like, wait a minute, I'm not gonna. And I remember telling the band that I was in, like, hey, you know, I want to switch gears. I want to do more, you know, no, they want to do more cover. They want that. And I, okay, you know, we, parted ways. I mean, we still stayed friends. I mean, matter of fact, when they got their new singer, they came to my place and introduced me and we hung out. And, you know, it's, it's, it's all good. It's just, you know, creative differences. Like you've got certain people want to, you know, I was full of piss and vinegar and, and other, you know, people don't uh, progress as fast or don't want to, it, 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 it's it's a lot of work too, and kind of heartache, and to write songs that you're gonna like, and other people are gonna like, you know. And that, that's the problem, and it is embedded in, you know. Again, when I was first in bands, and we were getting label interest around like ninety one, ninety two, um, a guy from Electra. We didn't know anything about this at the time. We, you know, an album out and uh, getting reviews, and we we're playing Mabel's in Champaign, Illinois, which to this day is one of the best places I've ever played. Thank you, Amy, Craig, and uh, what's his name? Uh, anyway, thank you. They, I loved Mabel's, uh, and I was spoiled. I didn't, re- you know, you get to LA and. These places are small and they, and, and they were caring and, and, you know, more like um, Amy kind of mothered us and, you know, uh, <laughs> you're not getting any of that in L.A. So I'm grateful. So we were uh, we had a sound check. We're sound checking and this dude comes in. And of course, the vouchers come over to him and he pulls something out. I'm on stage and, he, and then he goes up to the bar and it, and then the you know bar tech and Craig's like, hey, stop, you know. So we go we go over there, and this dude is from Electro Records, and he's like an AR. He's just, hey, you know, he's seeing multiple, it wasn't just us. He was like once he had been in Chicago or he come through here, he heard about us, and he was gonna go see somebody else. And and what he was most interested in, yeah, he liked the band, but the commerce are the are they generating money? And with that, he went to the bar, the the uh bartender like the owner of the bar who's are they making them yeah we were we were uh, selling the most booze of any other band we again we would sell a lot of beer and then that equates to okay how many you know cd you know albums they'll sell and he broke it down to us it's like it's not you know 100 percent perfect but that's kind of a um you know a tell of what's gonna and, and it kind of opened my eyes, like, wow, you know. A year later, our album's still out, and we're doing good. We're playing behind it. 
a Geffen Records A&R person shows up. And she's like 20 years old. Basically, her first job, she, she was telling us this, that, yeah, my father is the law. It, it runs the you know, legal department at Geffen. It's that, you know, and I don't even want to be here because I'm just signing any band, all the bands that sound like Veruca Salt. Again, putting all their eggs in one basket. Basically insulted us. And why are you here? Like, what? Spending this money just to the browbeat us? Again, it changed like band within a year, and it, that's it, it. Just kind of, you know. She didn't deserve, no matter who it is, to be in that position. Didn't know what the hell happened. There's nothing behind her. Like she hadn't had, she had any, in like a track record of success. No, just does anybody that sounds like Rukas or Nirvana? Does this go? You get. And I get that too, but then again, when I, you know, when I was coming up, major labels had different divisions, and you know, you know, you know there'd be a song like "Don't Worry, Be Happy," and you know, this, that, and the other, and then you might have an ACDC song. But now it's just, it's what it is. It's just the same sounding shit. Don't matter if it's rap, rock, country. It's it, it, and it's the people behind the scenes. These. Uh, <laughs> Creative dark age people that would never admit it. They couldn't wrap their head around, oh, creative dark. This is the best it's ever been. No, it's not. Bad. It's the worst. And I know a lot of people were going to be like, ah, oh, no, he's crazy. But then more, he's, he's right on it. He's spot on. And it's not a cop out of like, oh, well, see, but. But it'll come through. It'll come back around, you know. Let's hope. I mean, don't you miss good stuff? Whether it's a TV show or a a book or a, a art or anything. A car. I mean, it's, just, it's everything. Everything is. All you need to succeed in this dark age world is covet means meaning like you know secret handshakes and this and that and oh that and I'm the and, and they don't do that and that it's stupid they don't even talk about your talent I mean what are you talking about that for that's what we're doing that's what we're here that's what we're not no, no, nothing about making money none of that matter of fact in the 90s it was almost like yeah had to be Ernest as Winnie the Pooh and corporate rocks. Uh, it's a business, man. You know, it. believe it or not, these people want, I mean, come on. You're doing this out of the earnest of your, your, your heart. No. And I hated all that 90s shit, man. My favorite band of the 90s was Material Issue. And I got to meet uh, Jim from Material Issue. And I'll do an episode about that. But quite honestly, I I shouldn't say hate, but I I didn't like Nirvana, Soundgarden, uh, Pearl Jam is one of the worst bands ever. All that, all that. Yeah, just dude, Alice in Chains. Are you kidding me? And I got to meet some of those. <laughs> Matter of fact, I got I got to know their tour manager pretty well, and he became a friend, and he actually helped out my band. So I can't. And I would, he'd laugh, he loved that I would rant. <laughs> he didn't like him either. It was just a gig for, and he did, he was friends with, but he, uh, how we bonded was, I, I'm a big Jason and the Scorchers fan. He was too. I was like, oh, we kind of clicked. And, but yeah, I mean, again, what do you do? I mean, you got to keep your head up and just keep doing your art. It's, it's brutal. It, it is, uh, and hopefully things will come around. If you do speak out, people, these passive aggressive bullies are literally like, if you even say anything, you're the bully, you're the. So you just got to keep what you're doing, what you're doing. Just mosey on through. If you know you're doing, you, you, you will succeed. And again, <laughs> if you want to support this uh, rant, this ranting channel podcast, like, share, and subscribe in the description. There's the Zell info. Hook me up comment, whatever you want to do. 
And look, I love y'all. Uh, be blessed. And I'll see you tomorrow. Cheers.